Hey Blue Teamers, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions. I started Security Onion in 2008 to provide a free and open source platform for threat hunting, enterprise security monitoring, and log management to help you peel back the layers of your network and make your adversaries cry. In the previous video, we took a quick look at SO Import PCAP. In this video, we're going to take a deeper dive and see exactly how to create a virtual machine for SO Import PCAP. Anytime that we're going to install Security Onion, we recommend that you start at our website, securityonion.net, and then click the download link. We want to make sure that we have the latest version of our ISO image. So we can click this first link to download that ISO image. I've already downloaded it, so I won't do that here. But once you've downloaded that most recent ISO image, you can then follow the instructions here to verify that ISO image to make sure that it wasn't corrupted during download or otherwise tampered with. Once you've verified the ISO image, we can then click the link at the bottom of the page that takes you to our installation guide. We've got several different installation guides for different use cases. But in this case, we are focused on PCAP forensics. We want to run SO import PCAP. And so we can simply click the SO import PCAP link to learn more about how to install and configure Security Onion in order to run SO import PCAP. So the main things here are we have some minimum requirements, and that would be 50 gigabytes of storage, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and two CPU cores. Please note, of course, these are minimum requirements, so if you can afford to allocate more resources, definitely uh, do that. We do have a big warning here to make sure that you don't run SO import PCAP on an existing production deployment. It wasn't designed for that. It was designed for standalone systems, so that's why we're going through the process of creating a new virtual machine to install Security Onion and then run SO import PCAP. We then have a few simple steps here for installing that ISO image into that machine that has those uh, hardware requirements that we talked about just a minute ago. So now that we've got kind of an overview of what we're going to do, now let's actually make it happen. So I'm going to switch over to VMware Workstation. You could use VMware Player, VMware Fusion, VirtualBox, just about any virtualization solution and that process is going to be very similar. Uh, so we're going to create a new virtual machine and I'll simply choose the typical configuration and click next. Next we need to point it to our ISO image so I'm going to browse out to my ISO folder where I've downloaded that most recent ISO image and we'll click next. This is Linux and Security Onion is based on Ubuntu 64-bit, so we click Next. And we'll give this virtual machine a name and we click Next. And we'll go ahead and increase our virtual hard drive size to 50 gigabytes and click Next. And now we're going to customize our hardware because you'll notice that VMware defaulted to 2 gigabytes of RAM and we want a little bit more than that based on our hardware requirements. So we're going to bump up our RAM. In this case, we need at least four gigabytes. You can allocate more if you've got more. And then we need to go to processors and bump up our number of processors. Uh, we, we need to make this at least two. Uh, but again, if you have more available, you can certainly allocate more to the virtual machine. And that's all the hardware changes that we need to make for SO import PCAP. Now, if you were going to configure Security Onion for other use cases, then you might need to make some additional changes to that hardware configuration. But for the purposes of SO import PCAP, this is all you need. So we're going to click close and then click finish. Now we've got our virtual machine created. Now it's time to power that virtual machine on and we can press enter on the boot menu. And while that ISO image is booting, 
we'll kind of talk through our installation steps here just a little bit. So we just did step number two and we're waiting for the live desktop to appear. And as soon as that does, we're gonna double click the install icon and that's going to bring up the standard Ubuntu installer. We're going to answer a few simple questions and for the most part, we're going to accept the defaults. A couple of things to note there, we don't want to enable any kind of encryption and we don't want to enable automatic updates. Once we've completed that Ubuntu installer, then we would reboot and log into our newly installed operating system using the credentials that we create in the installer. So we're now up to the live desktop environment. We see our installer icon, so we double click that. And we can click continue and continue. And here under installation type, it's probably a good habit to always choose this LVM option for logical volume management. It doesn't really matter that much for just a small SO import PCAP VM, but once you start getting into larger, more production type deployments, you definitely do want to have LVM. So it's a good habit to be in. We click install now. And we click continue. It's asking what time zone we're in. It doesn't really matter because we're going to automatically reset that to UTC anyway. So we click continue. And for the keyboard layout window, we can simply slide this over until we see the continue button and click that. And so now we're going to enter our name, create a host name, set a password and confirm that password and click continue. And now we've supplied all of the information necessary for the installer to install that Security Onion operating system to that virtual hard drive. Okay, our installer is now complete. We're now ready to click restart now. That's gonna shut down this live desktop environment. We'll remove that virtual ISO image, reboot the virtual machine, and then it will come back up and prompt us to log in using the credentials that we just created. Okay, we're now prompted to log in, so we're going to use the credentials that we just created. Okay, now that we're logged in, we want to change the screen resolution. And in order to do that, we're gonna to go to the upper right corner. We're then gonna click on settings, then go to displays, select our display, Click the resolution drop down box and we're going to set 1360 by 768 and click apply. We now click keep changes and we can close the displays window. Now that we've got our desktop resolution set the way we want it to, we are ready to run SO import PCAP. And keep in mind uh, that we don't have to run setup separately because SO import PCAP is going to do that for us automatically. So uh, at this point, we just need to open up a terminal so we could right click and open terminal and we'll maximize that. So now we need to run sudo SO import PCAP and then pass it the PCAP file or files that we want to import. So in this case, we're going to use uh, a wildcard to specify multiple files. And these are gonna be some PCAP files that we have built right into our Security Onion ISO image. So we've placed those into opt samples Zeek, and then we have a subdirectory there called CVE 2020-0601. 
These are PCAP samples that came from the Zeke project based on a particular CVE that we'll take a look at in just a minute. So in this directory, we're going to do star.pcap, and that's going to import all of the PCAP files from that directory. So we press enter, we put in our password, and we press enter. Now we need to create our application username and password. So we create a username, we set a password, we confirm that password. And now SO import PCAP behind the scenes is running setup for us to configure all of the Security Onion services. And once it completes that normal run of setup, it's then going to go back and reconfigure some services specifically for SO import PCAP. So we'll give that just a few minutes to complete. At this point, we can see that the traditional setup has completed and SO import PCAP is now reconfiguring some of those services. And as soon as it's complete with that phase, it will then be ready to start importing those PCAP files and processing them against Suricata, Zeek, and then storing the PCAPs in our PCAP store so that we can retrieve them later. Now that Elasticsearch and Logstash have fully initialized, SO import PCAP is ready to import the PCAPs themselves. So we see there that it started with the first PCAP called broken.pcap, then it went on to ECDSA cert.pcap, next is explicit.pcap, and then exploit.pcap. So all four of those PCAP files were processed using Suricata, they were processed using Zeek, and then they were placed into our PCAP store so that we can pivot to full packet capture later and be able to look at entire TCP streams from start to finish. So now that SO import PCAP is complete, we have a hyperlink here. We can triple click to highlight that hyperlink. We can then right click and copy. Then we can minimize this terminal window Go over to Kibana and log into Kibana using the username and password that we just created during SO import PCAP. And then we go to our address bar and we right click and paste and go. And there are our Zeek logs. So notice that, first of all, that we do have Zeek logs. They are, uh, Zeek is formerly known as Bro. That's why you see them showing up as Bro log types. So we do have some Zeek logs, but we don't have any IDS alerts. So we didn't have any IDS rules written to look for anything suspicious in these particular PCAPs. Uh, but that kind of shows you the power of Bro, or Zeek in this case, that uh, where we might not get any IDS alerts whatsoever, we will still get some intelligence from our Zeek logs. And specifically, let's filter into our Zeek notices. Now we could do that by using the magnifying glass here and kind of filtering our overview dashboard, but let's instead go to our Zeek notices dashboard. So here we have six Zeek notices, and some of them you may have seen before, uh, SSL invalid server cert, you see that quite often. But these two up here are relatively new, uh, and they are based on that CVE 2020-0601 that we talked about earlier. So we replayed some PCAPs that had evidence of this particular CVE attack, which has to do with SSL certificates and specifically these unknown X509 curves. 
And so what we're seeing is that those PCAPs were imported and we've included some Zeek scripts from the Zeek community looking for this specific kind of activity, which then fires these Zeek notices. So we could filter in on that particular Zeek notice type for an unknown X509 curve. And we could then scroll down to the end of our dashboard where we can kind of drill into each individual log and look at the fields contained within that log. And we'd be able to see the message field. And this gives us a little bit more information. So in this case, ECC certificate with unknown curve. So this is a potential exploit attempt for CVE 2020-0601. So this is really good visibility to have. Uh, and again, we're able to get this very quickly and easily using SM import PCAP in a very simple VM uh, and without having to go through a whole bunch of steps. Now, that's, that was our first run of SO import PCAP, and keep in mind that that first run had to configure the system. Now, if I wanted to import additional PCAPs, I would uh, run my SO import PCAP command again and pass it whatever files that I want to import. So in this case, maybe I choose MarcoFu outbound.pcap. Notice that the system has already been configured, so SO import PCAP doesn't have to go through that configuration again. It can just immediately take that PCAP and import it. So it runs it against Suricata, it runs it against Zeek, and then stores that PCAP in the PCAP store so we can retrieve it later. So at the end of that SO import PCAP, we have a separate hyperlink here. So if we copy that, go over to our browser, paste and go. We should then have not only some Zeek logs for that particular PCAP, but also some IDS alerts. So again, we, we have a comprehensive set of logs that are created based on importing one or more PCAPs using SO import PCAP. So one thing that we might also want to take a look at is pivoting to full packet capture since we talked about that a couple of times. So we might want to take, for example, our HTTP log, click the magnifying glass to filter that dashboard based on that log. And then at the bottom of the dashboard under the all logs panel, that's where our underscore ID field is exposed and hyperlinked. So we can then click that to pivot over to CapMe and that gives us that full TCP stream from start to finish. So that kind of shows the, the power of having SO import PCAP generate not only the IDS alerts and the Zeek logs, but also place that PCAP into the PCAP store so that we can then later pivot to full packet capture and pull that entire TCP stream out and take a look at it from start to finish. So that's a very brief overview of creating a virtual machine for SO import PCAP and looking at a couple of examples of SO import PCAP, both a single PCAP and multiple PCAPs. So to wrap things up here, we'll go out to securityonionsolutions.com. If you are interested in things like training, professional services, or hardware appliances, please feel free to check us out at securityonionsolutions.com. We've got information there on those products and services that we provide, and we have contact information. So if you're interested in more information about any of those things, please feel free to reach out to us using the contact information there, and we'll be glad to help you out. So again, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions. I want to say thank you for uh, viewing this video, and we hope that Security Onion helps you to peel back the layers of your network and make your adversaries cry.